can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Richard Madison. And I keep saying this is unbelievable, but this is really unbelievable. He has prayed for 14 people, six of them brain dead, all 14 in comas, and they have all come back. As a matter of fact, Richard Madison, I called you and I asked you to talk to a friend of mine whose wife suffered a fatal heart attack and, uh, and she was in a coma and, and there no hope for anything. Uh, and you prayed for her, and you didn't know this, but I told you before we went on the air, uh, that a few days after you prayed for her, she responded to verbal commands. That's called a miracle. That's did a miracle. you know that was going to happen with her, or did you just pray by faith? Well, I remember walking into the room, and as soon as the Lord instructed me to put my hands upon her feet, and I began to weep, and uh, I felt such a strong anointing, and uh, I just, after praying, I, I told... Uh, uh, her husband, Michael, that uh, I really believed the Lord was going to raise her up. But let's go back to an actual person that was brain dead. Tell me that you prayed for her and they came back in a coma. Well, one particular person was shot between the eyes uh, in Alabama and uh, he was considered a vegetable, brain dead. The bullet went through uh, his forehead, broke up into fragments. The doctor said it scrambled his brain. I went to his home. Um, his mother was taking care of him, hoping that, you know, maybe something would happen. And after six months had lost hope, went in and laid hands on him and prayed for him, told her a little bit of my story, how the Lord had raised me up from my deathbed. And uh, we just began to raise our hands and praise God. I said, we're going to thank God for this miracle. Within a week and a half, she called me and she's hysterical. I don't know who she is. I don't know if it's a relative or a friend or who. And finally, I got her to calm down enough to tell me that, uh, you know, she was Greg's mother and he had just awakened out of this brain dead coma and the bullet fragments are still in his brain. Is there anything you pray for that you have all sorts of unbelief over? Well, it used to be the hardest thing that I saw someone receive healing from was either diabetes or blindness. But uh, in the last couple of years, I've seen more people delivered from diabetes than uh, I have in the last 20 years. You know, one of the things I like about the road God has had you walk on is you have been taught through personal experiences the various ways to, uh, most people that believe in the Bible believe God heals, but uh, as my wife's grandmother used to say, in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. The thing is to, yes, believe He heals, but to know how to receive. Now, you've had lots of chance to leave this earth. As a matter of fact, at a young age, you had at least three attempts on your life. Uh, when you were six months old, you, uh, you fell on your head. You were in a coma for six days. You weren't supposed to recover. When you were five years old, uh, your great, great uncle went berserk. What did he yes. do? Uh, he had lost his mind, so to speak. and. And he was very jealous, just a spirit of jealousy. And he came to my grandmother's home to kill us. And he began shooting. And uh, I remember running and hiding under the bed. Uh, he shot my grandmother five times as he chased her around the house and went down the road and committed suicide. Uh, his intention was to kill me and her both. And, and uh, you know what's so amazing? He succeeded <laughs> with your grandmother. Yes, and the Lord raised her from the dead. I know, that, that was an amazing story. I remember yeah. reading about that. Uh, but then uh, when uh, you were eight years old, your cousin uh, must have been seeing too much TV or something. Mm -hmm. He tried to put you in a, you were in a washing machine. I was and in he a dryer. Was dryer and he was going to turn it on. And well, it wasn't him. We were playing hang and go seat. And while I 
went into a large commercial dryer to hide. Some people walked in, and uh, you know this, they saw me in there, and they be, held the door closed and was trying to find change to turn it on. And I was beating on the window, the door, and the guy's girlfriend eventually fought with him and made him open it. And uh, I knew if he turned it on, I was dead. And then you should have died when you were older from a cocaine overdose. And uh, a year later, head on collision. We're going to be right back, and you're going to find out that all things are possible. I, I, I don't want to be spooky with you or anything, you know, but it's, I'm so excited to tell you all things are possible in the name of the King of the Jews, Jesus. We'll be right back after this. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Sid Roth has found the key to worldwide revival. This is God's time to reach the Jewish people with his love. Messiah Jesus has torn down the wall dividing Jew and Gentile. The two together form one new man to reach the world. God's method to reach the Jewish people is through signs and wonders. This is why our website, SidRoth.org, is jam-packed with tools to equip you to move in signs and wonders. Understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church. Log on to SidRoth.org today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Richard Madison. And Richard, uh, many attempts for you not to be here today on my program throughout your life because it's almost like the evil forces knew that if you could win against them in every battle, you could help so many other people. But this was the battle of all battles. Head-on collision. What happened? Um, at the moment of the impact of the head-on collision in 1986, on April the 13th, my left leg was pushed through my pelvis, broke my hip, severely uh, broke my right foot. I wasn't wearing a seat belt, collided with a steering wheel. The ribs in my chest were broken. One rib broken too and punctured the aorta artery in my heart. Another rib punctured my right lung. My spleen was ruptured. C5 vertebrae in my neck was broken. My jaw was broken. My right eye was knocked out. And I was trapped in my vehicle for 39 minutes before they were able to transport me to Vanderbilt University Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee, where I was pronounced dead on arrival. It, it sounds to me that 39 minutes, even before you were dead on arrival, would have uh, just destroyed your brain anyway. Yes. Well, my family were told by the uh, leading trauma physician that he had pronounced me dead on arrival and was sending me to the morgue. But he later said he felt like something told him to at least try to do something. And later he told me that himself, that he had pronounced me dead on arrival, but he felt like something told him. And I wrote down Jesus on a piece of paper, and he said, well, I'm not going to say it was Jesus that told me that, but I want him to know that I was saying it was Jesus. Isn't that amazing how God can even use a non-believer to accomplish what he wants accomplished? Yes. Uh, but things did not look too good for you in that hospital. Tell me what transpired. Well, they uh, gave me 124 units of blood. I got hepatitis, yellow jaundice, blood poison, double pneumonia. They placed a brace around my neck. They waited 25 days to repair my broken bones. I acquired uh, many infections. Fevers raged in my body. They put me in beds of ice to try to bring the fevers down. They were giving me every antibiotic known to man. That's what the physicians told my family. Uh, they told my family I had no activity on the lower lobes of my brain. Um, my family was told to make funeral arrangements. Were you, were you in a coma? I was in a brain dead coma. Brain dead for how long? 27 days. That doesn't sound like much hope for your family. So they were told to make funeral arrangements. Yes. <sighs> what happened? Well, my mother refused to make funeral arrangements. She kept telling them, but you don't know the power of my God. And she kept bringing people in and every four hours for 10 minutes, they would lay hands on me, anoint me with oil and pray, and ask God to raise me up. I didn't know anything the entire time that I was in this condition. Uh, the only thing that I did remember is when I sat up is that I had just left a church, a prayer room, and I saw my mother praying for me, and I believe this was the third time that they gave up on me, brought a social worker in, told my family they had to make funeral arrangements because my liver and kidneys had stopped working. No, but I'm, I'm not understanding something. You said you had just left the prayer room. How'd you get there? I had an out-of-body experience. Oh. They had told my family uh, the third time when they brought the social worker in, my liver and kidneys had stopped functioning. They had done everything they could do. They had repaired uh, all my broken bones two days earlier. Um, 
three steel plates, 19 screws, two pins. They accidentally mm -hmm. severed a sciatic nerve into my left leg. And uh, I began to go backwards. They said, there's no medicine we can give him to start his liver and kidneys. We've kept him alive on life support, but you must sign the papers now. But my mother said, no, we're again going to the prayer room and pray. And I went, I walked through the hallway. I passed doctors and nurses. Do you remember slipping out of your body? I, I don't remember leaving okay. my body. Um, I didn't know I was having an out-of-body experience. But I walked through the hallway and I passed doctors and nurses and I got close enough to touch them, but I couldn't feel them. Hmm. And they didn't know I was even there. And I went in this room and I saw my mother on her knees and she's praying and calling out on Jesus. This was the third time that they gave up on me. And I wasn't a Christian at the time I was in the accident. I didn't know Jesus as my Savior. And I, but I watched my mother pray for me. And I spoke to her and she looked in my direction and I knew that something was wrong because she couldn't see me. And she's praying for me. And instantly I knew I had to do what she was doing. And I said, I looked up and I said, Jesus, if you're real, come on the scene and help me, something's wrong. And that's when I felt a huge hand come down and cover the top of my head. And I heard a voice that said, I'm Jesus, I'm real. I'm gonna raise you up and give you another chance. Immediately I went back to my body. I didn't see myself walk through the hallways, but I reached for the nurse at the foot of my bed. The last 10 hour death watch, I was swelled up, turned yellow and stinking. Um, you know, I had 400 staples held me together from nine surgeries, 17 drain tubes, an 18th tube was a feeding tube. I, my, my body was swelled as big as a barrel. My dad said my head was as large as a basketball. And uh, he said he had to hold his nose when he come in to see me hmm. before they went back to the prayer room. And uh, immediately when I set up, I reached for the nurse. I didn't know where I was or how long I'd been there, but I immediately knew I had to tell somebody about this hand and this voice. <laughs> what did the nurse do? Well, she I turned mean, around you and saw have, me. You must have driven her sugar crazy. Well, she turned around and saw me reaching for him. She jumped about <laughs> five feet because instantly the swelling was gone. I was no longer a vegetable. I had a sound mind. Infections left you my body. You were brain body. dead, and all of a sudden you had a sound mind. I had a sound mind. I had 12. She went and got doctors, and 12 doctors stood at the foot of my bed. They asked me all kinds of questions. I communicated on paper, and uh, one miracle right after another. What and about I, your mother when she found out? <laughs> well, this nurse actually saw that I was trying to speak. I had a tracheotomy in my throat. My mouth was wired shut. I couldn't speak. I didn't know why. And I'm desperately trying to speak to her. And I believe God moved on her to relate to her what had just happened. And she turned her paper over and said, what are you trying to say? And I just scribbled on paper. The ligaments had drawn up in my arms. It took physical therapists several weeks to straighten them out. And I wrote down, scribbled down, is there a church here? She said, you're at Vanderbilt Hospital. You've been in an automobile accident. And I wrote down, it's got red carpet and several pews. And my mom and dad's are praying for me. Now, had you ever been in that prayer room? Never been there. Never How, been, so I've never been to Vanderbilt Hospital. All right, because you walked there in the invisible realm, yes. you knew the color of the carpet, yes. you knew they were praying there. So what did yes. she say? I saw everything in detail. And uh, she read it. She said, uh, there's a prayer room on the first floor. I guess that could be a church, but I don't know what it looks like. Well, she said, it's been a long time since I've been there. And I scribbled down, I know what it looks like, and I know my family's there. I just came from there. Well, that really shook her up. And she motioned for another nurse to take my vital signs. She uh, vital signs, and she went down and got another, uh, uh, went with another nurse and got my family. Told my mother, walked in. My mother said a, a nurse walked in and said, "Is there anyone here in the prayer room? Don't mean to interrupt you, but is there anyone here that has a relative by the name of Richard Madison?" And my mother stood up and said, "That's my son, and we're not making funeral arrangements. We're going to pray until Jesus raises him up." And she said, "The nurse said, you must be praying to the real God. Your son just set up out of this coma." Uh, so she comes to see you. And my what? mother and aunt walk in. They're holding each other by their arm. And they saw me sitting up and their knees buckled. And they begin to weep and cry. And I heard them say, I can't believe it. God really did it. I can't believe it. God really did it. And she really believed you were going to rise from the dead. But she, it's when, when it, it happened, happened right. why did she believe this so strongly? Well, she said she went into the uh, ladies' room to wash her face. And she saw me all of a sudden in the mirror with a sheet over me, but all of a sudden the sheet dropped down and she said it looked like, instead of a sheet, it looked like a gown. Mm -hmm. And she said she believed at that moment that it revealed the Lord's going to raise me up and use me a as a minister. And, uh, you know, as I, you know, looked at the doctors and wrote down Jesus and shook it at them and the trauma physician couldn't understand why I was awake, why I had a sound mind, told me he was going to deliver me off the morphine gradually. And I wrote down Jesus raised me from the dead. I'm not addicted to medicine. 
because I believed I was instantly set free from cocaine. I didn't want no more cocaine. I didn't want no marijuana. I didn't want no alcohol. And uh, I, I just assumed and believed, oh, I must not need any, any morphine. And I wrote that on the paper. The fifth afternoon, the trauma physician came back in. He said, Richard, I pronounced you dead on arrival. Look me point blank. And he said, you shouldn't be here. He said, You're vest you were a vegetable. You, you seem to have a, a sound mind. Your neck was broken. We had three x-rays showing it broken. Now we th have three more showing it not broken. We gave you large quantities of blood and large quantities of morphine. And he said, I remember what you wrote on that paper. And he said, never my medical profession have I ever seen anyone come off the amount of morphine that we gave you cold turkey. Uh, he hold said, that thought. <laughs> you think that's something. Wait till you hear the lesson he heard really was taught on how to walk in the healing. Fourteen people in comas, six brain dead, came back. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! Call now to get Richard Madison's book, Raised from the Dead, for a donation of $18 or more. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1142. In this book, you will read the inspiring true account of Richard Madison, who was involved in a serious car accident, a head-on collision. He was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital. During an out-of-body experience, God revealed himself to Richard, and he was raised from the dead, completely delivered from drugs and alcohol. Jesus said to his disciples, greater work shall you do. Richard Madison is a living example of how to walk in a powerful, healing anointing. He has prayed for 14 people who are in brain-dead comas, and all have been awakened. This is a book that will help you believe God for your own miracle and teach you how to minister healing to others. As you read this moving book, you will clearly understand how to hear directly from God, know God's will and purpose for your life, defeat Satan's power over you, operate in the gifts of the Spirit, learn to prosper in your finances, receive physical healing, minister healing to others and much more. Call now to get Richard Madison's book, Raised from the Dead, for a donation of $18 or more. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1142, or you can write to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1142, or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today to get your copy of this anointed book. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Richard Madison. And Richard was brain dead for how many days? 27 days. 27 days. His, his body, he was, was in a horrible auto accident. Even his broken neck was healed, but there was a problem. They didn't even fool much with his legs because they, he's brain dead. They don't think it's, you know, it's worth the, the investment. But a miracle happens. He survives. And what about being in the wheelchair? What did the doctor say about uh, your legs? Well, they waited 25 days to repair the broken bones. And after repairing them, they accidentally severed the sciatic nerve into my left leg, took three bones out of my right foot, and told me that with the uh, three steel plates and 19 screws and two pins, I probably would never be able to walk. Maybe in a year, I could walk with arm crutches. And after leaving the hospital after 49 days, I leave in a wheelchair. And eight weeks later, I'm praying, I'm learning how to pray, I'm learning how to use the name of Jesus, and I... You're really a baby believer at this baby point. Baby believer. Just, just, I don't know anything. And uh, I'm just, I start praying. My mouth's wired shut. I said, Jesus, put feeling in my legs and I'll get up and walk. And I heard an audible voice, a whisper, arise and walk. And I said, I know that's Jesus, I know that's you, but I can't walk, I don't have any feeling in my legs. He said, you don't walk by feeling, you walk by faith. And I said, how do you walk by faith? He said, you just trust me and stand up and walk. And I locked the wheels on the wheelchair and I stood up. But wait, I, didn't the doctor tell you, according to my notes, that if you did that, you'd mess everything up? Right. He told me not to even push against anything, even at the foot of the bed, to scoot myself up. Somebody had to move me. But you knew all of this. Why did you stand up? I wanted out of the wheelchair. <laughs> okay. And I, I, I just trusted the voice of God. I knew it was the, Jesus because I knew the enemy wasn't going to tell me I could walk. And as I stood up, I lost my balance and I be began to ran run and I run through the living room and I'm trying to grab a hold of something, nothing to grab a hold of, open air, and I run about 30 feet, grab a hold of a door face and then I stop myself and I said, Jesus, I just ran out of a wheelchair, I'll never doubt you again. Then I looked around and realized I was about 30 feet from my wheelchair and I said, oh Jesus, get me back to my wheelchair. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, what happened when the doctor saw you? 
Well, I went back to the doctors just a few weeks after that, and uh, the the trauma, uh, not, the orthopedic surgeon could mm -hmm. not believe that I had walked in his office. I actually walked in his office. I I had no control over my walking and my. Uh, aunt and uncle that I was living with at the time, they they had they went and rented me a walker because I just run to the house and grab a hold of them, about knock them down, and they got me a walker. And my mother brought me a walking stick, and I walk in his office with a walking stick, and he cannot believe I'm on my legs. You know, his thought was you're going to destroy and break everything that has been accomplished, and I'm telling him, but you don't understand. This is Jesus. This is the power of God. And uh, I later picked up a, a few days after that, picked up a an elderly man hitchhiking on the side of the road took him 90 miles where he said he wanted to go. When he got out, his little suitcase, he said to me real sad, I wished I had a walking stick. I don't have a walking stick. I left mine on the side of the road where you picked me up. And I reached over and handed him mine, felt compassion for him, and I said, I'll get another one. And by the time I got halfway back home, Hebrews 13 and 2 come up my spirit, and I grabbed the Bible and looked at it and read it. Beware lest you entertain angels unaware. Well, I got to my aunt and uncle's home, and I start chasing them through the house to tell them about this man that could have been an angel. And I found out right then, you can have a revelation from the Lord, and everybody else don't get excited about it. But all of a sudden, my aunt said, where's your walking stick? How come you're not limping anymore? And I looked down, and I said, I gave my limp away, and I never limped after that. There's such a presence of God in the studio. It's almost like... Yeah, even from the beginning, but it's getting very heavy. What does God want to do right now, Richard? I believe that the Lord is wanting people to expect the unexpected. I believe the, the viewers that are watching uh, and those that may even be able to get this in their loved one's hands is that they can um, have this anointing in their home, in their lives. They can walk in this same anointing, in the same faith that's available to you and I. And we have to learn how to receive. I didn't know how to receive. And every That's really what I got out of your book. And I yes. have to tell you, I've read a lot of books on healing. But this is at a different level. Did yes. God tell you anything about this book? He told me to write the book and told me that, that I was to write it to help his people understand how to receive. And every time he healed me, he taught me something about healing. How to receive, how to expect, how to see others healed, how to receive healing from others, how to speak the word, how to stand on faith, how to uh, proclaim what you're believing God to do. So many ways to receive from God. And one day it may work this way, and another day it may work another. Well, I can tell you how it's going to work right at this minute, right this second. God is telling me that there are people with problems in their hips, and in Jesus' name, you are healed, whatever it takes, a miracle, hip be restored. Just as Richard stopped limping, you stop limping in Jesus' name. And someone's back has, oh, it's a wonderful, yes. any problem in your, you stand up and Richard will tell you, faith without a corresponding action is dead. You stand up and bend over, you'll see the pain is gone. And uh, Richard Sowen's neck was just healed also. Yes. Is God showing you anything? Well, when you mentioned the hip, the first thing that came to my mind was the sciatic nerve. And I, I, I sense that there are people watching that had severe pain running down from the base of their hip, down their leg, all the way to their foot, a burning sensation, irritating even for a sheet to lay upon their foot. And that sciatic nerve is being healed and that the irritation from the bone and around the nerve is being removed so that they won't have any more complication uh, from the pain in their in their legs. Now, God has also opened up the gift of prophecy. You saw your wife before you married her. Mm -hmm. Of course, she saw you before yes. you married her. Uh, you saw things that would happen in the world, according to my notes. Uh, yes. uh, you um, you saw a lot of end times things. You saw the war in Iraq uh, before it happened. Uh, you, uh, God told you about uh, some uh, explosions. Yes. Um, in 1987, God began to speak to me about the year 89 and about earthquake in California and about a release of an anointing for the Jewish people to return to their homeland. Well, I began to preach it and I began to tell people that there would also be a war with Iraq. Many thought I was crazy. It did happen even in 89, uh, earthquake in San Francisco, the Berlin Wall fell. Uh, many hundreds of thousands of Jewish people went back to Israel and of course we know just a few years after that the war, you know Saddam Hussein is trying to take over Kuwait and the war that started there Operation Desert Storm what has he shown you that hasn't happened yet 
Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39 is right on the verge of taking place. Also, Isaiah chapter 17 about Which the... Which is, uh, summarize it very quickly. What is that? Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39 is when there is an evasion, uh, invasion upon the uh, Jewish people from the Arab world with a coalition backed by the Russian army. And uh, it speaks of that, uh, how that he's going to bring all these armies together against Israel. And uh, that's being set up even as we speak right now. And uh, that's soon to happen, just in, a, in the next in the few other, short time. And the other pro uh, scripture you mentioned? Uh, the other scripture was Isaiah chapter 17, where it says, Damascus shall become a ruinous heap and shall be no more. And, uh, you know... Is that going to happen soon? That's going to happen soon. Well, let me tell you something. There's also one more thing that is going to happen soon. And I'm going to prophesy because God has shown me your heart. He has shown me that He loves you so much. He doesn't care what you've ever done because He sees the man and the woman that you could be, that He created you to be. If you tell God you're sorry for your sins, you don't need any classic prayer. You just humble yourself and say, God, creator of the universe, I'm sorry. And I believe the blood of Jesus washes away my sins in your own words. And I make you, Lord, as best I can. I want to know you the way Richard knows you. I want to know you the way Sid does and his guests know you. I want to have some peace. You just cried out, I just need some peace. Well, there's only one peace, and it's not in the world, and it's not in people, and it's not in money, and it's not in things. It's only in intimacy with God. It's not religion. It's intimacy with God. I say you are ready to walk in to the greatest adventure of your life. Call now to get Richard Madison's book, Raised from the Dead, for a donation of $18 or more. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1142. In this book, you will read the inspiring true account of Richard Madison, who was involved in a serious car accident, a head-on collision. He was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital. During an out-of-body experience, God revealed himself to Richard, and he was raised from the dead, completely delivered from drugs and alcohol. Jesus said to his disciples, greater work shall you do. Richard Madison is a living example of how to walk in a powerful, healing anointing. He has prayed for 14 people who are in brain-dead comas, and all have been awakened. This is a book that will help you believe God for your own miracle and teach you how to minister healing to others. As you read this moving book, you will clearly understand how to hear directly from God, know God's will and purpose for your life, defeat Satan's power over you, operate in the gifts of the Spirit, learn to prosper in your finances, receive physical healing, minister healing to others and much more. Call now to get Richard Madison's book, Raised from the Dead. For a donation of $18 or more, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1142 or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1142 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today to get your copy of this anointed book. If you are encouraged and helped by these television programs, please consider assisting us with future productions. Send your tax-deductible gift to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Call toll-free 1-800-548-1918 or visit our website at SidRoth.org.